Hi there, Happy New Year, welcome to 2022. Have you heard of Hanin Zrika? I bet you haven't. And the fact that you haven't says a lot. Let's check it out. So let me tell you about Hanin Zrika. She is the Aussie Rules uh, first Muslim player. I'm just reading from the Australian, the media report about this issue, and she will not play in an LGBT pride match after deciding that she cannot wear the pride jumper because it does not align with her religious beliefs. Uh, Greater Western Sydney Giants player Hanin Zrika told the club she will not play in Friday's match against the Western Bulldogs. Uh, many of her teammates are gay. She gets along with them and regularly travels with them to play matches. But wearing the pride jumper rainbow blocks against the Giants orange is a step too far for her. It's understood the issue with wearing the jumper is not about her personal feelings towards LGBT people, but concerns about whether wearing it aligns with the expectations and religious beliefs of her community. Zrika is a role model in her community and wants to encourage more Muslim women to play sport. She is concerned wearing the pride jumper will compromise that effort. Well, that's a very lovely, friendly report uh, respecting the diversity of uh, different people who are playing sport. Uh, and in fact, she posted this meme uh, as the first Muslim woman in the AFLW, uh, AFLW, get that right, I have a responsibility to represent my faith in my community. I respect people regardless of their sexual orientation. Uh, the ex decision was extremely difficult and I appreciate the support of the AFL Giants, my teammates. Inclusion is about creating a space where people are able to respect their right to choose how they live their life as long as they don't advocate hate and division. My platform is not a place for people to disrespect and harass others, so please be kind. Well, of course, the media were very kind to Hanin Zarika. Well, the Australian media, I'll come back to the New Zealand media shortly. They weren't so kind to other people that have expressed faith uh, issues on the Christian side. Um, do you remember this person, Margaret Court? Margaret Court is an AOG pastor and she believes in traditional marriage and she also believes that you are born either a male or a female. And of course, uh, there was this massive protest to get the Margaret Court Arena, the name of the Margaret Court Arena changed because of her bigoted views, apparently. So she, she wasn't treated too well by the media and by the establishment. And of course, there was Israel Folau. Now, back in 2017, when... It all began for him, which is actually earlier than probably you realised he put out this tweet. I love and respect all people for who they are and their opinions, but personally, I will not support gay marriage. Well, I mean, that, that's a pretty friendly statement. It's uh, similar to Hanin Zrika's, but as we know, there was a massive media pile on. He became... Uh, watched and targeted. Uh, activists went onto his page and tried to trick him into questions. And of course, then there was that infamous tweet where he basically quoted uh, scripture, a number of uh, pieces of scripture from the Bible. Uh, and of course, the drunks, the adulterers, liars, fornicators, thieves, atheists, idolaters didn't really worry about it and just moved on. But um, there was a certain group that didn't, LGBT, and of course it was all on. And uh, Raylene Castle, who was in charge of rugby at the time, said that, no, you can quote the Bible, but you can only quote the good bits. Interestingly enough, during the euthanasia referendum uh, two years ago, uh, and New Zealand media reported that Islamic leaders had said that Muslims who choose euthanasia would go to hell. So, but, you know, that is the teaching of their holy book and um, different faiths have different teachings and we should be free to express that. But of course, that wasn't the case for Israel Folau. I mean, even the prime minister got involved saying that actually Israel Folau needs to be quiet and um, he can't hold those I'm views. The fact that he, he is for many a role model, he's a person in a position of influence. And I think that uh, with that comes responsibility. Well, you could argue the same for Hanin Zrika. She is a role model and with that becomes responsibilities and she needs to wear that jersey, apparently. But good on her. She has stuck 
to her convictions. And I actually texted a, a friend of mine who's a Muslim and I said, good on her. And he said, yep, she's just following the teachings that are part of our faith. So how did the media report this one? Well, the Australian media, here's one from the Sydney Morning Herald. And this is the only report that I saw that sort of entered New Zealand media um, from the Sydney Morning Herald. It said, sources said the small forward has explained her reasons to her Giants teammates. Her understanding of the position she is in and accept that she supports them on a personal level. The club and the AFL have been working closely with Zurika and supporting her as she reached a position this week. And the left-wing Guardian, who are no friends of Israel Folau, said... Guardian Australia understands the club undertook extensive consultation with the Muslim community in the lead up to Zurika's decision. Well, I wonder if they also did extensive consultation with the church community uh, with Israel Folau. No, they didn't. Israel Folau got sacked, lost his contract. Uh, but meanwhile, Zurika will be back on the field and things will go on. And how did the New Zealand media report this? I mean, they were all over the Israel Folau story. It was on every media channel. It was interviews, Seven Sharp, uh, The Project, every, every interview. They were off to interview uh, experts who were offended by what Israel Folau had said and what his beliefs were. Well, here is the coverage from the New Zealand media on Hanin Zrika. Yeah. Yep, that's right. There has been utter silence, which is why you haven't heard of Hanin Zarika. In fact, I even went to a few uh, activists' uh, Twitter pages, the ones that have piled onto Israel Folau, uh, Peter Fitzsimons over in Australia to see if they'd talked about it. And once again, here was what they had to say about Hanin Zarika. You know, and, and that should really concern us because what it's showing is that there is a double standard. You can have diversity, we will be inclusive, but if it's centered around the Christian faith, you can expect to be piled on. Now, we probably already knew that, but what this episode did was just confirmed it. Mm -hmm.